Well, good afternoon, everyone. And today we're here in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, and we're gonna head into the Blue Moose. Now we've been here before. I'll put a link in the description on our first review. We're back here to review it again because everybody's asking us, hey, Will and Dawn, uh, do the Blue Moose. And last time we were here, we didn't do the wings. So we're gonna try the wings out. You ready, Dawn? I'm ready. Let's do this. Let's do it. Is that Will and Dawn? No, it's a it's a four door. They actually have outside seating, and you can actually well eat with your with your dog. Yes, they actually allow dogs on their outside seating here. Well, they actually got a menu outside. Of course, here's for starters. They have Bucks poker chips. They're six ninety nine. Uh, moose relic sticks. Those are like what? Uh, mozzarella sticks, Bavarian pretzels with tw twisted cheese dip, which is nine ninety nine. Uh, here's the pulled pork nachos we heard so much about. I think we're gonna do those. And of course they have the well the wings. They have twelve wings for twelve dollars. Actually a good price. Dollar a wing is about about average for these places. Blues big plates. So they have boneless wings, shrimp, chicken fingers, and burger platter. Of course they have salads. They also have moose, moose sandwiches, moose widges, moose widges. And of course you have chicken cordon bleu and brotherly love, the Tennessee dog. There you go. And blue's big burgers. Now I had their burger last time, I can't remember which one. I think I had the Moose's All-American. And what have you. Of course, here's some sides. And, well, dessert. We well, brought out the basket to put the bones in. Of course, we have some some wipes there, so we can keep our fingers and that <laughs> clean, right? So there was a 25-minute wait. Of course, this place is really packed today. Um, it is Sunday, and so uh, but it was really cool. It didn't take 20 minutes, maybe 10 minutes of that. So if I remember correctly, when we did our last review here, um, I gave it a mediocre review, I guess. Um, and so we're gonna see if anything's changed. I guess we didn't give it a bad review, but we gave it a mediocre. The food was kind of mediocre last time. Of course, Dawn, you had a good experience I like last food. time. Last time I didn't. So we're gonna see how how things have uh, changed. Uh, it's been, what, probably about a year since we've been here? Yeah. So. Dawn got the chicken cordon bleu, right? Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we got Parmesan wings and honey. Parmesan wings, of course, with a side of ranch. And I got the pulled pork nachos. Check that out. Oh, wow, look at that. The pulled pork nachos. This looks really good. Let me try some of that. Oh, wow. So good. A big old bite for the camera. There we go. Look at the size of that thing. It's it's huge. It's huge. What is it? Is it good? Mm -hmm. 
pork on These pulled pork nachos are still good. Good. I think we ordered way too much food. We'll have to take some of this home. I love the um, barbecue sauce they put on it. Kind of reminds me of Anna Keith's. Um, you got a big, you took half of the, you took the, you took the big one. You took the big one. Oh, that was good. It is good, isn't it? Guys, we might found a rival for the Anakishka nachos right here. But, um, it, it is really good. Oh, oh boy. Look at the size of that fry. I haven't seen fries that long in a long time. Get it that long in a long time, right? I'm going to get into these wings while they're still hot. I'm going to try um, one of these Parmesan wings here. Um, here they are. Garlic Parmesan. Okay, so the wings are crispy. That's the way you want them. A lot of places are soggy, but the outside's got to be nice and crispy. And the flavor is unreal. Bon, you got to try it. Mm. Yes, their wings are good. Oh, wow. They are very good. Wow. I think I found a new love. See, now, last time I was here, I was turned off on a lot of things. This time, I came here, and I'm just totally shocked on the quality, the taste. And that's the reason why it's so important if you own a restaurant to try to serve your best every single time. Because Dawn and I, we'd probably be coming here like all the time. Don't get tried one of these. Yeah, we had to try the honey, honey. This is the honey garlic. Honey garlic. Look at the size of this wing. It's like huge. And I like how it's crispy on the outside. That's the way. Oh, wow. That's good. Oh. Sweet, sweet heat. That's what this is. It's like sweet heat, right? It looks like we're going to be, well, taking some home. Of course, the wings were overkill, and we killed quite a few of those. Are you, are you full, Dawn? Yeah. Well, we had two waters. Don had the cordon blue. I had the barbecue nachos. Twelve wings, and our total came up to thirty-six fifty-one. So now we just got done eating at the Blue Moose. Yeah. So we actually this is a re-review. Uh, we did this like over a year and a half ago. Actually, I was looking at the video. We did it on my birthday, and the review we gave it was kind of mediocre. I think I compared it to. Um, an Applebee's, right? Um, so we went this time, and oh my gosh, things have changed, or at least this time we hit the sweet spot in the restaurant. Mm -hmm. Okay, so first of all, the decor in there is actually really cool. If you want to, um, you know, indulge in, in games, any kind of sports that might be going on, this is definitely one of those places. Of course, it is a sports bar, and they do serve beer and um, maybe wine. I don't know if I looked in wine, but I know they serve beer at least. So that atmosphere might not be for everyone. But other than that, uh, it did have a great atmosphere. Uh, the place looked really clean. Uh, I did notice that their merch, when we first walked in, they actually have really cool merch. I like their t-shirts. Uh, yes, they were real. They had really, really good merch, I guess. And then, so, um, Let's go with the staff. Uh, so we, we, it was re really good all the way around. Our waiter was awesome. Yes, the waiter was, ran top things, made sure our drinks were filled. Um, that's the big thing about service, guys. You know, it's, it's not extremely hard. If you keep the drinks full and stuff and you come by and check every now and then, most of the time you're going to get a good review. And this, this guy was right on top of it. So then we ordered, of course, we ordered a lot of food, but we do that during food reviews because we want to give you guys an in-depth of 
you know what I mean, uh, of the food that, that's available there. So we ordered the wings. We had Parmesan, and then we had the honey garlic. Oh, my Great. gosh. Amen. They were awesome. Of course, the wings were crispy, which they're supposed to be. Um, you know, they're actually better than Buffalo Wild Wings. Uh, they for were sure. good. And also, this place here is going to get our vote right now for the best wings in all of the Smoky Mountains. Um, we've had wings at other places, and they just didn't compare. It's good. Now, you ordered the Cordon Bleu. Mm -hmm. The Cordon Bleu with chicken and ham and bacon and cheese, and it came with fries. Yeah. I had a little piece. Of course, it was good. Um, actually, I, 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 I get that next time, too. But... I ordered the pulled pork nachos. Of course, everybody knows Will. <laughs> likes he likes nachos. And oh my gosh. So we were, they were hitting home runs out of this park, okay? Well, they hit a grand slam with us today. Um, those nachos were really good. The, the pulled pork was tender. I liked the lightly drizzled uh, barbecue sauce. Of course, they use queso, the white queso, uh, which is really good. Had some scallions on it, I think, and um, those, those, those little green things. They're scallions, I believe. They're like onions, mm -hmm. but I think they call them. They scallions. were good. I had some. Oh they my were really gosh! Good. Um, it was perfect all the way around. Um, it was amazing, and we definitely, uh, definitely is a great, great place. Now, the first time we gave it a mediocre, but it was in January. It was the off season. I just don't think they had their what's off season their their thing going. You know, they didn't have their game on, but today they had their game on. Uh, the staff is stellar. Um, so I guess here's the question we ask in all of our videos: Dawn, would you do this again? Yes. Uh, guys, I wish we didn't have the bad service or you know the mediocre review the first time because we'd probably be coming here, not even for food reviews, we'd probably come here on our leisure leisure basis, right? Um, as for value, uh, we paid $36, and of course we got those wings, we got this, the burger and all that. Uh, we just spent like $36 for a couple eggs just the other day. <laughs> uh, this is actually uh, below, yeah, food. below average for pricing, so you are going to get a, a, a deal here, I would say, right? Um, wow, it was amazing. It was am Now we're gonna take you to what we did this morning. So yeah, actually this is kind of reverse. This is actually the end of the video, but we're actually gonna take you what we did when we first woke up. We decided to go out to um, Great Smoky Mountains National Park to um, look at the only ADA accessible trail. Now, we've been having a lot of questions about handicap accessible and stuff like that. So um, we wanted to show you guys the only um, ADA accessible uh, trail. Also, when we're on that trail, we discovered something, or we came across something mm -hmm. that um, really actually upset me. So here's that. We've been having a lot of questions lately about handicap accessible trail. Well, we're just passing the Sugarlands Visitor Center now, uh, coming from Gatlinburg. And we're going to show you from this point on how to get to, well, the only ADA accessible trail here in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. It's actually not located too far from the Sugarlands Visitor Center. So as you can see, we're heading up towards Newfound Gap Road or the way that you would take to go to Cherokee. And it's just up here, actually just about maybe another 100 yards or two. In fact, here it comes now. You'll see the sign saying Sugarlands Valley Nature Trail. You'll actually want to, well, the turn here. Well guys, we're here at the Sugarlands Valley Trail. And this is the only ADA accessible trail here in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. As you can see, it's a it's a loop trail and it's paved all the way around. You can actually take a wheelchair and go around the whole thing. It's actually a very, very nice trail because it's totally shaded and um, it's great for everybody. In fact, this is a great one for kids. Um, anybody who's a first time a hiker or a first time just want to get out and see nature now of course there's actually some old foundations over here and we always see wildlife here 
even though it's just a small loop. But let's get in here and check this out. So the length of this trail is a half mile. It's paved. It's less than 5% grade. Travel time is 30 to 45 minutes. It's got a lot of exhibits. Also an old house site. So yes, this is actually a really nice trail. Of course it is, it is paved. And um, there's a lot of nature on here. Of course we're gonna go up to the Little Pigeon River, which is right here too. Um, this is actually a really nice trail to come with a maybe a cup of coffee or maybe even the kids. Um, we always see wildlife. In fact, over here is actually one of our spots where we like to get butterflies. We'll go over there and see if there's any butterflies. Hopefully, they're being... I'm not really up on my butterfly jokes. Butterlicious? What would it be? I don't know. Is there any joke? Is there any, Butter like... Finger. Butterfinger? I don't know. Well, this here says, no place like home. And as you can see, we're here right now. And back in the day, well, this used to actually be all kinds of farms and what have you. And if you take the Gatlinburg Trail, you will notice that there is a bunch of old farms and, and what have you along the way. But as you can see, this is where the river, Little Pigeon River, snakes through heading towards Gatlinburg. Well, we came across an old home site here that's actually located well right on the edge of this trail you can actually get up and personal with this old chimney here you can see down below there's some fragments of an old house or foundation but just a peaceful walk here uh, right now, there's actually a little bit of a campfire um, smell in the air, which is kind of different. But just a beautiful, there's a nice little bench over there. You can sit down, relax a little bit. The sun will peek out here and there on the trail. Well, some things I noticed about this trail that I've seen people doing, there's actually a lady and she's jogging around it, which would be ideal for that, unless it's real busy. Then it wouldn't be ideal for that. And there was also a, uh, a guy and he was pushing the baby stroller around mm -hmm. and it looked like he was getting the baby relaxed. So this has got a lot of uses with this paved um, surface here. Now I'm seeing a lot of really cool plant life now some of these are wildflowers but they haven't either sprung yet or they're about to the spring this one here is a lot taller than the the first one we came across looks like someone might have been trying to light a fire in there um it's definitely a no-no here in the park i love looking at these old foundations and chimneys and just imagining what it was like to live here in the Smokies back in, well, 1800s, maybe early 1900s. We know one thing is for sure, it would have looked a lot different and a lot quieter. You can actually hear Newfound Gap Road there. Quite busy this morning. A lot of folks are heading into the mountains for a little fun. I like all the river stone that was used in the fascia of this fireplace. And that mantle up there, and pretty cool also.
we've been smelling smoke on the trail and we actually found a some kind of fire or something going on over here we're gonna have to try to put this out yeah somebody was is having a fire this is a a no-no we're gonna have to found another illegal campsite here and the fire is still going no wonder why we were smelling uh, fire we're gonna have to put this out um, we're gonna have to go get a cup or something Don I don't know we'll go back to the car I guess we're gonna go back to the car real quick hopefully it doesn't ignite but um, Dawn said she found some toilet paper and and it looks like someone was trying to camp out here guys you can't camp in the National Park without a permit and you can only camp in designated areas and this here is a no-no this could catch this whole forest on fire and we just went through the Gatlinburg wildfires and this stuff here makes me very very angry that's the reason why you can only camp in designated areas we're gonna have to go find something to put that out with but uh, we did find the source of smoke <laughs> it's really bad too maybe we can find a ranger I don't know but um let's go let's go see we're gonna go back to the the Jeep I smell like smoke now. Okay, we gotta go get a cup or something. I don't have nothing on us to put that fire out with. I don't want to dump my corn out for the full. Um, we can find something back there. We gotta, we gotta have a McDonald's cup or something. I don't know if we can find a ranger, but I don't know who's doing it. Well, this is second. You know, this is the second time we were in the Smoky Mountains in the last week or so. And we came across that legal campsite. There must be a lot of people. Um, As we kept getting closer, it well, we've been smelling it. Stronger and yes, stronger. we've been smelling smoke like off the trail here. And I know there's no campgrounds here. It's my first thought. Okay, there's a campground, but there's no campgrounds in this area whatsoever. Um, I don't know. This, especially that, makes me mad. They didn't put their fire out. You know, it, the whole trail smells of smoke. Yes, it does. I knew this, I, I could smell when we got out of the car. I'm like, someone doing something. Yeah, I don't know, but we found it though. That's good. Let's um. Yeah, let's try and get it out. Yes, that was our spot where we usually see butterflies. The butterflies are not around because somebody decided to. Smoke is better. Yeah. The... You know, the thing about it is, is that that does hurt the environment. Like the butterflies are always there. Well, that smoke is gonna chase those butterflies out the smoke is pretty bad too now we smell it yeah well we're gonna go we're gonna put it out then we'll get back to the vlog guys i'm sorry this vlog in the middle decided to <laughs> uh, but you can't leave a fire burning here at all um of course you can hear their newfound gap is <laughs> extremely busy When we're back here at the parking lot. We're gonna go see if we can. Well, normally we have um, plenty of like empty bottles or cups in our car. Unfortunately, we just cleaned it out. So what do we got? A, a Dew bottle. A Mountain Dew bottle. We'll get some water from the stream and uh, put it out. You can see the. I guess we're gonna try and take out the fire. Well, we'll try to get it out, and if I can get a hold of a. A ranger I'll um, let them know what was going on you can see the the smoky haze and you can smell the the uh, the fire so he's gonna try and put the fire out with the Mountain Dew bottle how many how many to. times yeah, it takes I know, a few times <laughs> <laughs> oh it got worse gonna be well about putting out fires we, we smelled it and it was really bad when we walked up and I'm like it, 
just kept getting worse and worse and oh. say so, hi. Hi. <laughs> Man, this is really... I think it's burning more. I don't know. Look at the smoke. You can smell that they were burning plastic and other things in here too. So... That's um, Mountain Dew bottle number three, you guys. We're gonna try and get the fire out. You know, we've been hiking in these mountains for years, and I have never came across a legal campsite. I've never come across an illegal campfire. <laughs> and this right here makes me angry. And it could burn down all of this here it's uh it's unreal it really is i think people are cuckoo you know here he goes You can tell that they camped out here because you can see a little tag left over from like a Walmart tent or something like that. And then also down in here you can see I don't know some identification numbers or or something in the fire. But we noticed they must have camped out here last night because it looks like they might have burnt their tent or something you see the rubber bands this really is not a good thing well I dumped about 10 bottles of water on there 20 ounce bottles it's pretty much out I don't see any smoke or nothing but we're gonna continue on well showing you the beauty of the Great Smoky Mountains You can see an old, well, farm retaining wall. And the path goes well right through the old wall. A lot of history out here. This little walk side placard says, Forging a Park. Pretty much talks about the folks that once used to call this home. And also course the folks that shape the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Check out this huge snail. He's actually really cool. A lot of people have carved their names in this tree over the years. You can't carve your name in anything in the National Park. In fact, the fines are actually really strict and heavy if you get caught defacing 
even this tree or structure or anything and so uh, today has been an adventure of not just uh, it's been an adventure guys lots of things not to do right ah, I can still smell that campfire in the air yeah thank god that we caught it uh, you know before if it did spread or the wind picked up could have been bad this is my favorite place to come and look at butterflies of course there's one here dancing around in front of us here looking for a place to land or something Land of Abundance. Another neat placard here talking about the diversity of wildlife found here in the Great Smokies. Well, this placard here says regenerating the forest. It shows what this area looked like in the 1930s. And then today, well, it looks like that with the chimney. And of course, in the year 20. 22 um, it'll be dense and hopefully more wildlife and what have you um, whenever I see a fern it reminds me of that book I read back when I was a, a little kid where the red fern grows if you never read that book I also believe there's a movie too check it out well guys, we had a great day. Of course, this morning we woke up and we went to the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. It's always good to do that. And then of course we had lunch here at the Blue Moose. But guys, that's gonna do it for today here in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. And if you like this vlog, give it a, give it a thumbs, thumbs up. up. Also, uh, please subscribe so you don't miss these upcoming, well, Smoky Mountain Adventures. And we have Smoky Mountain Adventures every single day. And until next time. Thanks for watching. Bye everyone. Keep on riding, keep on riding. <laughs> they see me rolling. They're hating patrol and they try to catch me riding dirty. 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 Why goals? <laughs> it's a mountain dew, you guys. <laughs> Donnie's got one too. Something to drink. It's been more action in this park than anywhere.